What is up? What is up? What is up, everybody? This is your boy Is Nefarious here, and I'm here for another edition of your favorite series. Here we go, following the Pittsburgh Steelers of the Premier Madden League, and we are here in Week 13. We are four and six. We are trying to get on the winning side of things and continue this one-game winning streak that we have. Uh, without further ado, let's jump into it and let's see what we're dealing with this week. All right, so here we are. Uh, nothing to really talk about. Uh, looks like no dev story. Uh, nothing crazy. Um, we got a, a player returning from injury. It was the weekly training injury that we got last week. So we could fix our depth chart a little bit. Uh, but we'll jump into that in a second. Uh, first, we got to take a look at how our team's doing so far this season. So let's jump over to the stats and see how our, uh, our players are looking from this season. All right, so here we are with the quarterbacks. We had two quarterbacks this season. So far, we've thrown for 3,000 yards between the both of them. Uh, through through nine, we're four and six, uh, through ten games. Oh wow, uh, quick math. Uh, but through ten games, we've thrown for over three thousand yards. Um, we have twelve touchdowns, all twenty touchdowns to twenty-two picks. So we are in the negative side as a user when throwing picks. Uh, just taking a look at JT Daniels, uh, seventy-seven percent completion. Uh, we'll go through the stats. So he's played. He's played eight games. We'll say he's played four and he's played seven is basically where we're at. So just taking a look at that, he's played four, he's played seven, uh, passing TDs, uh, we got 12. Actually, we'll just do it by the eight. So um, he's got eight, he's got five. So uh, he's got 12 and eight games. He's got eight and five games. So, um, you know, pretty even there. Interceptions as well, kind of the same. Uh, taking a look at the completion percentage, JT Daniels definitely has a completion, completion percentage by three. Uh, yards per game, we had more yards per game with um, Jared Goff, and that actually went down because he played a couple games where it was just a half. Um, so he's probably averaging close to 300, if not over 300. Taking a look at the passer rating, 106 from the rookie, 103 from uh, the veteran. Um, yards per attempt, as you can see, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of shocking that, you know, where yards per attempt about 12 yards from both guys so it's pretty crazy how that happens uh he's been sacked 10 times he's been sacked six so you know just taking a look it's kind of been the same story no matter who's quarterback we're just deciding to go with the younger uh option and jt daniels to to develop um jared goff you know he, he started off the season for us he was he had uh one win in four games uh jt daniels has three wins in the seven games that he's played so uh he's three and four and jared goff was so actually he's three and three jared goff is one and three so um that's basically where we are uh taking a look at the rushing so here we are looking at the running backs and Najee harris has uh, 1082 yards on 182 carries oh uh, we had a rule we have a rule in the league that you can't have more than 80 percent of the carries for a single running back and right now he's sitting at 76 percent so 76%, so he's really close to that. He's averaging 120 a game. He's got two fumbles. He's broken for 24 tackles, um, which is pretty interesting. Um, taking a look, 14 att attempts, Sue um, blocked, uh, has broken eight tackles. So he's breaking a lot of tackles. Just taking a look, the long is 77. Uh, nine games played, he's been fully healthy this season. Knock on wood, we definitely want him to remain healthy. Um, but, you know, we got to keep an eye on that. We definitely don't want him getting over that 80% because we want to make sure we have him if we make him to, into the playoffs and we have him for the start of next season. Taking a look at the receivers, uh, right now Chase Claypool is leading yardage, 41 receptions for 855 yards. He has 17 Ds, averaging uh, 95 yards a game. Uh, Amari Cooper, same thing, really good season, 51 catches for 825 averaging 82.5 yards a game. They both have uh, five plus touchdowns. Amari Cooper has six, Claypool has seven. Uh, taking a look, Rob Gronkowski is our top uh, receiving tight end. Uh, 33 receptions, 519 yards, three touchdowns. We also get 20 receptions, 258 yards, and two touchdowns from George Pickens, who's doing pretty solid as a rookie. Uh, Joey Fortson, uh, short-lived, seven for 173. He just can't block well enough for us to be comfortable with him. 
Uh, Sam Laporte, 11 for 158 and one touchdown. He had a pretty solid game last game. Uh, looking to get him more involved. Le'Veon Bell is our leading receiver in running backs. And then you got Najee Harris, who has 105 and 14 receptions. Count Balazs also has a few receptions as well. So a pretty good, um, pretty good numbers across the board from all our wide receivers. Uh, definitely got to pay attention, pay attention to them because they also have, also have rules. So let me just go into that and tell you exactly where they are as far as air yardage and yen usage. So I took a look at the uh, rules as far as the air yardage. They, I think they have to be under 18.5 or 19.5. It was some number they pulled off the NFL. Um, we're good there. We're good on the receptions. Nobody's getting too much love compared to the rest of the team. So we're pretty good um, on all fronts. So we're happy about that. Don't have to worry about that. I don't think we're going to even come close to that because we've got two options. We've got Chase Claypool and we've got Amari Cooper. And then we also got uh, Rob Gronkowski who gets involved in Sam Laporte. So we're not too worried about that. Offensive line, uh, I don't really like the stats. I don't think they keep track of it well. Uh, well, they're doing a decent job with Kevin Dotson, even though I think he should have way more sacks than show there. Um, but, you know, I don't I don't like that those stats. Uh, taking a look at the tackles on the defense, 59 from uh, Mika Fitzpatrick. Our safeties are doing a lot of the tackling. We also got tackles from Devin Bush. Mon Gardner has 34 tackles in here. He, the funny part is he only played compared to the rest of the team he's only played seven games so three extra games and they got uh 20 19 tackles uh he's got 25 extra tackles um so he was on pace so in seven games he had 34 so he was on pace for uh just about you know five a game so uh pretty solid pretty solid pace from him um for for a corner that's probably because we had him in the slot uh, taking a look at the tackles for loss, we have nine from uh, T.J. Watt. We have four from Samson and Bakum. Sacks, T.J. Watt has four. Definitely a better season than last season. Definitely think we can get more sacks with him as well. So we're going to look to do that. Uh, we got one sack from Jordan Davis, our rookie, uh, which will go into the, just the rookies um, in a second. Uh, taking a look at the interceptions, we have six from Mika, four from Devin Bush, four from Terrell Edmonds. Bradley Roby has four, um, two from Peyton Wilson. Uh, so a pretty solid season interception wise. Uh, Force fumbles. Uh, we got a we got a we got a good amount. Frank Clark, Justin Zimmer, uh, Damon Arnett, T.J. Watt, Terrell Edmonds, and Mika all forced to fumble. And we have a few defensive touchdowns. I think only two right now. We had a lot more last season. I think at this point, uh, but we have so two so far this season. Uh, now let's take a look at specifically the rookies on both sides of the ball. All right, so we've already talked about JT Daniels, so I won't go into that. Um, just to grade him, if we had to grade him so far this season, I would give him a B as a rookie coming in, uh, you know, handling the offense. Um, he's won games. He's 3-3. Three and three, He's 500. Um, you know, he has a lot of intercept, uh, interceptions with 13, uh, but he's just about even. So I'm going to give him a B on the season, pretty solid season. He's doing what he has to, not doing too much. So I'm going to give him a B. Uh, we don't have any rookie running backs, so we're not really going to go there. Taking a look at the rookie receivers, we got George Pickens, but we also got Sam Laporte. Um, just to give him grades, George Pickens, I would give him probably a C, uh, C minus. He's not really involved in the offense, and it's not his fault. It's kind of the scheme we run and the way we like to run this offense, so i uh, not going to give him too much flack for that. Maybe in the future he'll get more involved, but we're going to give him a C for now. Uh, taking a look at Sam Laporte, uh, the rookie we uh, grabbed as a tight end. Uh, you know, as a blocker, he, he is really good. Um, given that every run game that every time he's been in, in our run game has averaged just about five yards a carry, if not more, I'm going to give him a minus. B, no, B plus, B plus, B plus. We'll give him a B plus. Um, you know, the run game is really saving him. He's not getting involved too much in the passing attack, but that's not what he's there for. He's there to set the edge and really get the run game going, and he's been doing that. So we're going to give him a B-plus, solid, uh, solid start. Uh, and remember, he wasn't the starter to begin the season. Uh, no offensive linemen are rookies, so we don't really have to worry about that. We've got a few guys that just uh, stepped in. Logan Bruss, I guess we could give him an A because every time he stepped in, he's done his job. So um, other than that, there's really nothing to talk about. Like I said, I don't like offensive line stats. Taking a look at the defensive rookies. So tackles, Amar Garner. The first one's Amar Garner. Now he got injured, so it's hard to grade him. Um, given that the pass defense wasn't the greatest when he was in there, we're going to give him a C-. 
So um, the pass defense wasn't there. He's done a good job in run support. I will give him that. But he's not here to be a uh, run stuff in uh, safety or a, uh, you know, inside inside presence. He's supposed to be here to lock up the outside. So we'll give him a C minus. Uh, definitely like to see how it improves moving forward. Um, Peyton Wilson. Now, this is an interesting one. We're actually going to give him a A. He has been great ever since he stepped in for uh, Jermaine Carter Jr. He's been uh, really good. He has two interceptions on the season. No sacks, uh, but he has one pass deflected. He's got 30 tackles in how many games did he play? I think it counts all the games he was involved in, and he's been involved in every game. Um, but we can take a look at the downs played. 318 downs played. Um, so he's just about at the same, with a little less downs played, he's just at the, about at the same amount of tackles as Amon Garner. So he's on a solid pace, I would say. Um, he has a two interception, so I would give him an A, a solid season from him so far. Taking a look at the other rookies, Jordan Davis. Um, so tough to give him a grade. Uh, don't know, you know, he he's plays that nose tackle. He's not supposed to have flashy stats. So just going based on how our run defense was, um, I'm gonna give him a C plus, C plus, because uh, it's been good, it's been bad, it's been both. I've seen him be involved in stuff in the, uh, the stuff in the run. I've seen the run actually tear us apart. So I've seen the best, uh, I've seen the the best and the worst out of him. So we're gonna give him a C plus for now. It's still up for debate, but a C plus is what we're gonna give him for now. Taking a look at the other rookies, Jeremiah Moon um, does, doesn't really get involved. He only has 217, 217 down play, uh, downs played. He doesn't have a sack. He's supposed to be rushing the passer. He has four tackles. Uh, we're gonna give him a, we're gonna give him a D. Um, you know, don't know how to grade him to be honest, because he he's been involved so little. Uh, right now we're gonna give him a D. Um, you know, he's played over 200 downs. He doesn't have at least one set. Um, as an edge rusher, just the edge rusher, so we're gonna have to give him a D there. Take a look at Devondre Sweat. He's come in and played really well uh, ever since somebody went down. He's only played 25 downs in the last two games. Um, I'm gonna actually give him, uh, it's still up for debate, but right now we're gonna give him a B. I think he's been performing really solid for us, so um, that's it for the rookies. Uh, those are the grades we're gonna give him, you know, pretty solid uh, rookie class that we have. Now let's jump into the uh, Houston Texans see what we're dealing with all right so here we are taking a look at the Houston Texans and just like us they're dealing with an injury bug and they're also dealing with some rookies uh, not the best team you know cookie boy cookie boy does YouTube and you should know cookie boy um, but you know a, a really good user he's got the Houston Texans he's trying to do this rebuild right now Sam Howells is starting quarterback he's at 80 overall so he's doing a good job building him up um, he's got that short accuracy, medium accuracy, and deep accuracy, all the 85, so he's doing really well in building him up because that looks like it's all from um, what we call a tribute request, so really good job by him getting him built up. He did sign Ryan Tannehill like we did, uh, well, well, like we did, we signed Jared Goff. He ended up getting Ryan Tannehill, which is a funny story because we tried to trade a pick for Ryan Tannehill just to be that stopgap stop gap quarterback for us. Uh, it didn't work out. He went to free agency, and we signed Jared Goff before we could get to Ryan Tannehill. So uh, Cookie ended up lucking out, if you want to say lucking out, with Ryan Tannehill, even though he doesn't have him started. Taking a look at the running backs, he's got Deontay Foreman. He's got Raheem Mostert, um, uh, Tyler Aguirre, or whatever. Um, that's his rookie running back. But, you know, a pretty good running back room. He moved Josh Gordon to running back because he, he qualifies under the – uh, running back rules that we have in the league taking a look at the fullback. He's got the rookie playing fullback uh, Wide receivers. He traded for Christian Kirk. He's got a speedy wide receiver in Jalen red um, He's also got Nico Collins who he gets involved, you know, so it's a pretty oh, it's an okay offense I want to say it's the greatest uh, definitely an okay offense um, the tight end Brevin Jordan we actually hit him up because he was on a trade block we wanted Brevin Jordan uh, but he wasn't willing to take what we, we would give him um, so a solid tight end he's gotten Brevin Jordan 85 speed uh, really athletic taking a look at his offensive line definitely a weak spot of this team as you can see the sick uh, the really bad uh, Max Sharping um, then we got Luke Matthews playing center uh, Kenyon Green is the rookie he drafted which is a really good pickup by him uh, and then he's also got Jason Peters. So uh, pretty solid um, 
you know, pretty solid pieces to build around as far as Luke Matthews. Uh, then you got uh, Laramie Tunsil and Kenyon Green. Other than that, it needs a lot of work. Uh, taking a look at the uh, defense, uh, you got Kingsley and, and Nagbar. Nagbar, I think that is. Um, really slow, so I don't know if he's playing 4 3 or 3 4 with them. Uh, he's got Ryan Bowman as well. I know he's got um, his rookie injured. Um, he drafted, I forgot his name. Uh, Drake Jackson. He drafted Drake Jackson. He's injured. He picked up Calias Kali Campbell. So he, it looks like he's running the 3-4. He's got Ross Blaylock playing the middle. Uh, doesn't really have the best of defensive lines. Calais Campbell was a good pickup, but he definitely doesn't have a good defensive line. Doesn't look like he has really good linebackers. He did grab Rokon Smith, though, who is a really good linebacker. But other than that, you know, uh, really subpar uh, linebacker group. Um, definitely without Drake Jackson as well, as you can see him at the bottom right here, injured. Uh, he's a big piece. Not having him is huge. So I think we could take advantage of this front seven, um, which he won't like at all because he hates people that run the ball. Um, take a look at the corner. He's got a really fast corner in uh, Traymond Smith, uh, but really short. So we're not worried about throwing a jump ball to Claypool with this guy. Um, I don't think. We'll have to take a look at him and see if he could get up get up like Claypool can. But if he can't, I think we could really expose that. Uh, Patrick Peterson is okay. You know, he's towards the end of his career. He's getting older. He's getting slower. Um, he's His defense is really hurting. Uh, he's got a few good pieces to build around, but it is really hurting. Uh, he's got Justin Reed, who's really good. Uh, Monte Nicholson, who is also a solid piece. But it's a, a defense that's really hurting. This whole team is hurting, to be honest. And Cookie would tell you the same thing. Um, I'm interested to see how the rebuild goes. Uh, definitely going to keep watching his series and see how it develops. Uh, but now let's get over to our team and let's see if we got any storylines to talk about. So I, I pretty much covered it in the uh, stats. There's nothing to really talk about. We're going to run with the same squad. I don't think we're going to change much. Um, you know, we're happy with the way it's going. Uh, good last game offensively and defensively. We're happy to get Brandon Linder back, which you're going to see in a second. We're going to move AJ Can back to center. We're going to get Trey Turner back to his right guard spot. And then we've got Brandon Linder back at his right tackle spot. So uh, that's good to have. Can't wait to get our d defensive line fully healthy. But then again, Linval Joseph has been playing phenomenal. Definitely somebody that... I don't know when I when I get to it back. Uh, Jordan Davis has been playing great too. So when I get to it back, I don't know. Um, I think you know he's gonna be a plug and play. We'll see. But it's good to know that if, if somebody goes down, we still have Linval Joseph who's playing at a really high level, uh, playing really well. Tavondre Sweat as well, playing really well for a rookie. Um, so you know we were we've been happy with the way the defensive line performed last game because it was a run heavy team that we played and their biggest run was on the outside so uh, that was more on our outside linebackers making sure that they uh, keep their run fits uh, other than that everybody else is pretty much gonna remain the same um, Simpson Ubaka playing that 3-4 we might actually move around Devin Bush but we'll do that in formation subs during the game uh, move him around move him to the right end move him to the left end just to get him on the edge as well maybe even rush the passer from there so we're gonna mix it mix and match where he goes um, Mika Fitzpatrick phenomenal Terrell Edmonds had a really good game last game um, you know overall good game. Uh, we are gonna make one switch though I'm actually gonna go back here We're gonna put Bobby Price at that too because when we go into that dying package that has the safety Come into the box. We want it to be Brandon Price But other than that, that's the one change we're making uh, We're pumped for this game. We got to continue the winning streak now. Let's go to our weekly training Let's hope that everybody comes out healthy all right, so here we are with the training, taking a look at our team. Um, we are 10th in defensive rank. We are 8th in offensive rank. Defensive scoring, we're 22nd. Offensive scoring, 17th. Defensive total yards per game, we're 12th. Offensive total yards per game, we're 7th. Defensive pass yards per game, we're up to 9 now. Uh, offensive pass yards per game, we're 11th. Defensive rush yards per game, we went down a little bit. We gave up a little too much. Uh, on the ground to the Carolina Panthers a little bit had to do with the read options as well as the uh, outside run that he had that went for like 50 60 yards uh, but we're 22nd there offensive rush yards per game were eighth defensive uh, turnovers were 16th offensive turnovers were 19th we didn't have any turnovers last game which was good our focus 
players for this week are going to be Chase Claypool, Sam Laporte, JT Daniels, and Jordan Davis. Uh, so hopefully everybody comes out healthy. That is the goal. Last week we had uh, Brandon Linder, Linder go down. Uh, our controller just vibrated. I hope that doesn't mean somebody's getting injured. Um, I didn't realize that it vibrates like that. Uh, but we're good on defense. Taking a look at the offense. And we look clean. We look clean. We are good. Perfect. Everybody's healthy besides the guys that are already on an injury report. Um, so that's good. Uh, now we take on the uh, Houston Texans and Cookie Boy. And let's see how we do. All right, so here we are taking on the Houston Texans and Cookie Boy 17 as he gets a nice little drag route that's going to go into the end zone after a broken tackle. So he's up 7-0 already. We're going to hit him with a counter here. It's only 7-0 here in the second quarter. And we got nothing but daylight as he gets by his linebackers, gets by his secondary, and we take it all the way into the end zone with Najee Harris. Najee Harris with a huge run there, uh, puts us back into the game, 7-7, it's tied up, we are here in the second quarter, he's going to try to go over the middle on a nice interception by Bradley Roby, uh, he's going to try to run it back, but he's going to get tackled inside the 20, uh, and then we're going to run a little play action, the very next play, and it's a fumble, a sack fumble as he picks it up, and he's going to get away from all these linemen and all the defenders and celebrate a little bit, as he's going to take it all the way into the end zone, and making it 14-7, the Houston Texans take the lead but we're not gonna give up we're here we're gonna hit our rookie George Pickens immediately on a vertical route on the on the seam he gets into the end zone now it's 14 to 14 he's looking around he's gonna try to go deep and Bradley Roby go ahead and pick goes ahead and picks that off and he's gonna try to run it back once again and he's gonna get tackled outside the 30 um, so we're here on the 35 we're driving we're gonna run a little stretch play or a power and we're gonna run it into the end zone making it 21 to 14 we got the lead and then here he is dropping back he's gonna get intercepted once again this time it's Damon Arnett Damon Arnett with a huge uh, interception and he's gonna set us up inside the 30 we should come around, come out with points again we're gonna run a little red zone scissors and we're gonna hit our running back there Najee Harris in the corner of the end zone making it 28 to 14 and on a fake field goal from the 62 he's gonna hit Brevin Jordan nice little throw there and he's gonna take it into the end zone as he celebrates so it's 28 to 21 I don't know how we fell for that but we did 28 to 21 but we get the ball at half and here we are on the first drive we're gonna try to hit him over the middle and nice interception he got up there uh that should have been an easy complete the completion but madden does madden things and he gets up there for that interception and then we're gonna get it right back as we use her that corner out with christian kurt damon arnett with a huge interception there here we are gonna run a up and out i mean an out and up and we're gonna get it with amari cooper as we're hit while we throw it and he's gonna take it into the end zone making it 35 to 21 and the game's pretty much over here uh he's looking to somehow come back we get an interception and we have nothing but space in front of us we thought about nailing it but we we took it out and we got a lot of space and we're gonna run all the way down the sideline his own guy is gonna tackle his own guy it's the second game in a row where we've seen that and then we're gonna get close to the end zone and celebrate a little bit as we get into the end zone making it 42 to 21 here he is in the red zone he's gonna get a nice little touchdown here make it 49 to 28 to 28 uh, but the final score is gonna be 52 to 34 as you can see there we come out with a win all right, so here we are with the post game. Uh, we just finished up. We played the Houston Texans. We had the advantage team-wise. We definitely have a better team. Uh, Cookie Boy's doing a good job building that team over there. Just taking a look at the final score, 52-34. to 34, We won. Uh, total offense he had, rushing yards we had, passing yards he had. We had uh, He had it in first downs. Um, kick return yards. We didn't return any kicks. He returned a few. Um, total yards. Is that? Is That's not offense. I think that's... No, that's, that has to be offense. Yeah, that's, that's definitely offense. Total yards he had with 598. Uh, we were plus four in turnovers, third down uh, conversions. Um, we had, we were six for 11. He was three for eight. We did a good job uh, getting him off the field when we needed to. Uh, we were 0 for 1 on fourth down. He was 1 for 2. Uh, two point conversion he didn't get. Red zone, we were 3 for 4. I think we had a sack fumble on one. Uh, taking a look at the player stats. So some of the player stats. Uh, Sam Howell, 28 for 44, 382 yards, three touchdowns, seven interceptions. JT Daniels, uh, 15 for 21, uh, 265 yards, 71% uh, completion percentage, three touchdowns, one interception. That one interception, uh, we'll, we'll say, was ball hawking Madden, to be honest. 
uh, because there's no way a, a safety should jump that high. You'll probably see it in the highlights. Um, but 17 for 134 for uh, Najee Harris, three touchdowns. So he got busy. Monster, uh, mustard didn't get anything going. Uh, seven for 32. Average 4.5 yards to carry, but he doesn't run the ball. Uh, Kellen Balaj, 5 for 15. 5 for negative 1 for Alunia. Uh, uh, Suwu, we call him. Uh, JT Daniels had the two fumbles, so great game from him. Um, Sam Howell had one, a uh, couple of rushes, had one yard. He, he got sacked a few times. Uh, Taking a look at the receivers, uh, his receivers got busy because he was playing from behind. Uh, 8 for 156, 8 for 119, uh, 7 for 92. Uh, one TD for each of these and then two TDs for the tight end. Uh, Mostert had five for 45 as well. Uh, Amari Cooper was four for 83 and a touchdown. Uh, Chase Claypool, three for 53, no touchdowns. Two for 34 for Gronkowski, two for 31 for Laporte. George Pickens, two for 32. Najee Harris, two for 32, and he had the touchdown. Um, taking a look at the defensive stats. Uh, tackles, we had Bobby Price, Justin Lane up there, as well as Amika Fitzpatrick. Tackles for loss, we had two from TJ Watt, one for Samson Ubakum. We had one from Jordan Davis. Did a really good job. TJ Watt had two sacks, Samson Ubakum had one, and then we also had one from Jordan Davis. So a really good game from the defense. We got pressure. Um, he's averaging about four and a half yard, uh, four and a half sacks per game against. So it's pretty much what, what he expects. Uh, four sacks. Um, we had seven picks, three from Arnett, three from Roby. One from Wilcox, so our defense got busy. Uh, deflections, they had the two forced fumbles. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. You know, we come out with a big win. We got to jump into next week. And we got to come out with a win next week when we take on the New York Giants. Uh, we have to win out. If we want to win the division, we definitely got to win out. Uh, as you can see, we didn't have the 200 yards rushing. We had the turnover battle. We didn't even have 150 yards rushing. We had uh, the sacks and the turnover battle. And uh, we had half of the yards rushing. So we got 10 points, which is nice. Uh, definitely closer to getting another um, focus player, um, but you know we definitely got to we definitely got to perform better. Um, you know, can't give up 34 points, uh, even though we had this game in hand. Next week, like I said, we take on the New York Giants. Uh, it's going to be a home game. Um, I think we have a lot of home games to finish out. We had a lot of road games to start. Got a lot of home games to finish out, but we are now five and six. We are tied for first in the division. We'll see what happens next week when we take on the New York Giants. But thank you for watching. If you're enjoying the series, please like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. My name is Is Nefarious, and I am out of here.